Two companies that I've always sort of pictured on the visual end of the spectrum are Nintendo and Microsoft when it comes to video games. Microsoft is obviously very progressive with their online services and always tries to have the beefiest system out there with things like, of course, the Xbox One X. But Nintendo always sort of marches to the beat of their own drum. They do their own thing. They don't release the most powerful hardware. They focus more on the game side of things. But there's something definitely strange happening right now in the world of video gaming with worlds colliding that I never really felt would end up colliding when I thought about it. Because when you think of things like the old console wars in the 90s with Sega taking shots at Nintendo, Genesis does what Nintendo, it was a very hostile environment. Companies didn't like each other. Companies didn't want to work with each other. They always wanted to one-up each other. But it seems like as time has gone on, the console wars have shifted away from the actual companies and gone into the minds of gamers, actually. And what's really interesting right now is the partnerships between Nintendo and Microsoft because there's a lot of stuff going on and that's what I want to explore in this video is this cross play that we're seeing with the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One potentially the future of gaming and how far can it go so basically in this video we're gonna sort of talk about the past with Nintendo and Microsoft the present and the future so sit back relax make sure you subscribe to the channel and let's talk about all this crazy cross play that's going on hey RGT85 hey Sean oh my god it's Stevie Richards So to start things off, we're going to talk about the four games that are currently available on the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One that offer cross-platform play. First up on the docket, we have Minecraft, which of course is sort of the catalyst for this video. There's a lot of stuff happening with that right now, and that's sort of where I got this video idea from. So we will talk more about the Minecraft situation a bit more in depth as the video goes along, but I think everyone knows what Minecraft is. You build little villages with people, and of course there's some cool stuff that you can do. But really one of the most interesting things about the Nintendo a Switch version of Minecraft was in order to access online stuff, you actually had to log into an Xbox Live account in some situations. So pretty curious there and definitely a interesting fact. Now, of course, we also have Rocket League, which was a big deal because when Rocket League came to the Nintendo Switch, obviously Rocket League had been out on other platforms for quite a while, the PS4, the Xbox One, and of course Steam. So right then and there, when you have cross-platform play, one of the benefits of it is that you have a large install base on day one for the last system that gets the game, in this case being the Nintendo Switch. So if there's not a lot of people playing the Switch version of the game, which of course there was because it's Rocket League, you instantly had access to all of your Xbox friends and your PC friends as well. Next up we have Paladins, which released on the Nintendo Switch pretty recently, depending on when you're watching this video, and it's a fantastic game. I actually really enjoy Paladins. I used to play it a lot on the Xbox One. I dabbled with it on the PS4, but the Xbox One was where I played most of it. Now this is a free-to-play game, except on the Nintendo Switch. The Nintendo Switch free-to-play version is coming at the end of the summer is what the company is saying. But honestly, I bought Paladins for $30 with the Founders Pack that unlocks all the characters, and I really don't regret it. It's a super fun game, and really it's a unique game on the Nintendo Switch. There's not a game like Overwatch on the Nintendo Switch, and that's probably the easiest way to describe Paladins, is it's very similar to Overwatch. So, fantastic game. I haven't talked about it enough on the channel, so I'm glad I was able to sort of cover it a little bit. And of course, the final game is Fortnite, which is a cultural phenomenon and the fact that you can play with Xbox players and PC players just adds so much more fun because people play on all sorts of platforms. The Xbox user base and of course the PC user base is absolutely massive. It's arguably the most popular video game right now when it comes to online games and the Nintendo Switch version is super fun. It's fun whether you're playing with Switch people or if you're playing with friends on the Xbox One or PC. And the best part about all of these games is it's very, very easy to link up with your Xbox or PC friends. Friends. They didn't make it convoluted. They didn't make it super difficult. You literally just open a menu and you add your friends on whatever device they're on and boom, you're instantly put in the game. Now, a future game that's coming out pretty soon is a game sort of similar to Fortnite called Crazy Justice, another battle royale style game, except there's no sort of building aspect to it. It's more of just based on gunplay and ground control. And this game also offers cross-platform play with the PC, uh, Xbox, and Nintendo Switch. Now, what's interesting about this is obviously Crazy Justice 
Genesis is a much smaller indie game, but these development tools in order to be able to use cross play with different platforms are readily available to pretty much everyone developing a game on the Nintendo Switch or the Xbox. So that really opens up the world of possibilities. You can really do a lot with that when it comes to cross platform play. It's not just regulated to the big companies. If smaller companies want to invest some time and effort into putting cross platform play into their game, which would phenomenally help the player base of it, they can do that. So I really like cross platform play. I think it's a fascinating thing. And really what's sort of even promoting it more now are the companies themselves. Usually when a game releases that has cross-platform play, you don't really see Nintendo or Xbox talking about it. Obviously Sony is the odd man out in this situation because for whatever reason they are not open to the world of cross-platform play. If you try to use your PS4 Epic account on your Nintendo Switch version of Fortnite, it will not let you. You actually have to make a new account. Now to me that wasn't a big deal because I played mostly Fortnite on the Xbox One, didn't really play that much on the PS4. But still it seems a bit petty and you've heard different rumors one of the ex Sony executives said it would all really boil down to money and I do see that because at the end of the day this is a business but I think the goodwill of gamers is rewarded when you treat gamers with respect and when you do things like cross play and they can play with other people on other systems I think that's a sign of good virtue and I think Nintendo and Microsoft are starting to realize it because recently Nintendo and Microsoft teamed up for a video promotion for Minecraft now that they could play together with the new uh, pack that was just released and it's actually on Nintendo's YouTube channel it's actually on Microsoft's YouTube channel and they're talking to each other on Twitter like yo you want to play a game of Minecraft yeah let's play together well my body is ready and just to see this sort of banter between two of the three biggest video game companies in the world it's just absolutely amazing to me because I, you never would have seen Nintendo and Sega do this in the 90s or Nintendo and Sony. Remember when Crash Bandicoot uh, went to Nintendo headquarters to try to one-up Mario and stuff like that? It was a very different time. It was a very different place for video gaming. But nowadays, a lot of these companies are very good friends. A lot of these companies aren't nearly as cutthroat. And you sort of feel like maybe Nintendo and Microsoft are realizing that Sony is sort of the odd man out in this situation. And you wouldn't expect that because if any Thing, if you would have told me three the three companies, two of them were working together on cross-play, I would have immediately thought PlayStation and Microsoft, because Nintendo sort of seems like the old man, you know, you know, the future is here, old man. Like Nintendo's sort of a bit archaic when it comes to online stuff, but you're not seeing that with this situation. Now, of course, we have to talk about the future of this because I think the future is very interesting because this is not the first time that Nintendo and Microsoft have actually sort of pseudo worked together on things. Hear me out on this. So, of course, we have Diddy Kong Racing on the Nintendo DS. Now, Diddy Kong Racing on the Nintendo DS was primarily developed by Rare, but it was owned by Nintendo. So, when Diddy Kong Racing came to the DS that was a pretty big deal because at the time of course Rare was owned by Microsoft now now because of this Nintendo had to remove Banjo and Conquer from the version of the game on the DS because of course those are IPs owned by Microsoft but I feel like Microsoft probably could have put somewhat of a stop to this even though the game is mostly owned by Nintendo it's still using Rare's gameplay so I feel like since Microsoft isn't really in the handheld market they allowed this to happen and of course you have the Halo DS situation now there's a lot of speculation to how how much of the footage and pictures out there are actually real some people say it is a reskin of GoldenEye Rogue Agent but supposedly IGN back in like 2007 confirmed that Halo DS was something that was in the works it was something that was being pitched that Bungie was actually working on a prototype for and Matt Casamania whatever his name is actually played the game and it was a whole big thing because Halo on the DS like that just seems so uh, you know far out of left field but the DS actually had a lot of FPS games so it looks like Nintendo and Microsoft have always sort of had you know a mutual respect for each other maybe I can't really recall a time when Nintendo and Microsoft went out of their way to sort of insult each other so I mentioned Diddy Kong Racing DS and Halo DS because I pretty much feel like there's a small potential a very small potential but a potential nonetheless that maybe Microsoft games and Microsoft first party games could potentially move to the Nintendo Switch. Let's remember, Minecraft technically is a first party Microsoft game. They own the studio. So for that to be on the Nintendo Switch right there, pretty interesting. Of course, it is a huge market. Of course, it's gonna make them a lot of money. So from a business standpoint, it makes sense. But this Switch version was of course done after um, Microsoft acquired the company that made Minecraft. 
And when you look at Microsoft as a company right now, they are branching out, you know, with arcade games like the Halo game that's only coming to the arcade. You, of course, have Gears Tactics, which is a PC only game. So they are branching out. Do I feel like Nintendo could infiltrate Microsoft? Probably not. I don't foresee Nintendo first party IPs being on a Microsoft platform because I don't know. I don't think we'll get that. Could you maybe see Mario or Link pop up in a Microsoft game? Or Master Chief appear in Smash Brothers or something like that? Or could something like a Halo game end up coming to the Nintendo Switch? I don't know. I, I don't know how far it'll go, but I think it's interesting to think about how far it'll go because obviously these companies have no problem working with each other. Obviously these companies are in two very different positions when it comes to the hardware wars. Microsoft has really no interest in the handheld market. Even Sony's dropped out of it. So for the Nintendo Switch, it's a pretty diverse system. It's a system that, yes, is a home console, but it's also a console that you use on the go, depending on how you look at it. And the fact that it's not really a power competitor to Microsoft Microsoft, I think puts Microsoft at ease and I think it also puts Nintendo at ease. Let's face it, I don't think Nintendo cares about what other companies do. And maybe Microsoft is sort of taking that attitude as well. They're just really focusing on themselves. They're focusing on the power game and they're focusing on their next console to see what they can fix from the Xbox One. I'm not sure what the future of cross-play is. I'm not sure what the future of cross-platform play is. But this relationship that's building between Nintendo and Microsoft is very interesting. And honestly, I think you could see some really crazy stuff come out of this I think the sky is the limit with it and really I'm just sitting back and watching it and enjoying it because honestly it's a good thing for gamers it's cool to be able to play with people on other platforms it's cool to be able to play with your friends who maybe don't own a Nintendo switch or an Xbox one it's really a good thing for gamers at the end of the day and Sony just looked kind of like a bitter old man and I love Sony but let's face it they don't have a good look right now they got you got a little egg on their face so let me know in the comments section down below what you think about this cross play what you think about the promotion between Nintendo and Microsoft and what you think about the future of crossplay on the Nintendo Switch and the Xbox One or even Project Scarlet. And thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you check out other videos on the channel and make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. And of course, if you really enjoyed the video, there's all sorts of links in the description box down below. Check out other stuff going on, social media, Facebook, all sorts of fun stuff. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Later. Take it